Story 7 of Uncle Wiggily's Travels. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Stacy Cologne. Uncle Wiggily's Travels by Howard Roger Garris. Uncle Wiggily and the July Bug. Well, what shall we do today? asked the white pussy of Uncle Wiggily as they traveled on together the next day after the adventure at the snake hole. They had slept that night in a nice hollow stump. Hum, I hardly know what to do, replied the old gentleman rabbit. Of course, I must be on the watch for my fortune, but as I don't seem to be finding it very fast, what do you say to having a picnic today? The very thing, cried pussy. We will get some lunch and go off in the woods and eat it. Only we ought to have a lot more people. Two are hardly enough for a picnic. I would like some of my friends to come to it, spoke Uncle Wiggily, but I am afraid they are too far off. Couldn't you send them word by telephone? inquired the pussy. I'm sure I would like to meet them, for I have heard so much about Sammy and Susie Littletail and Johnny and Billy Bushytail. There is no telephone in these woods, replied Uncle Wiggily, and we haven't time to send them postcards. I wish I could get word to them, however, but I don't suppose I can. Yes, you can, suddenly cried a voice down in the grass. I'll tell all your friends to come to the picnic if you like. Indeed, I would like, said the rabbit. But who are you, if I may be so bold to ask? I can't see you. There he is. It's a big June bug, exclaimed the pussy. I beg your pardon, spoke the bug quickly as he crawled out from under a leaf and sat on a toadstool. But I am not a June bug, if you please. You look like one, said Uncle Wiggily politely. I am a July bug, went on the funny little creature. I was intended for a June bug, but there was some mistake made, and I didn't come out of my shell until July. So, you see, I am a July bug, and at first I thought it would be jolly fun to hear all the firecrackers and skyrockets go off. It isn't so much fun as you imagined, said Uncle Wiggily, as he thought of the time he went sailing into the air on the skycracker. But don't you like being a July bug? Not very much, you see. I'm the only one there is, and all the others are June bugs. The June bugs won't speak to me, nor let me play with them, so I'm very lonesome. I heard you were talking about a picnic you were going to have, and so I offered to call all of your friends to it. I thought perhaps if I did that, you would let me come to it also? To be sure, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. You may gladly come, but how are you going to send word to all of my friends? I will fly through the air and tell them to come, was the answer. I am a very swift flyer. Watch me. And then and there the July bug buzzed around so fast that Uncle Wiggily and the pussy couldn't see his wings go flip, flop, flap. Well, they decided it would be a good plan to have the July bug act as a postman, so Uncle Wiggily wrote out the invitations on little pieces of white birch bark and gave them to the bug. Off he flew into the air, waving one leg at Uncle Wiggily and the pussy. Well, now we must get ready for the picnic. Get the things to eat. For that bug flies so fast that soon all my friends will be here, said the rabbit. So he and the pussy began to get the lunch ready. Uncle Wiggily had some food in his valise, but they got more good things from a kind old monkey who lived in the woods. He used to work on a hand organ, but when he got old, he bought him a nest in the woods with the pennies he had saved up, and he lived in peace and quietness and played a mouth organ on Sundays. Well, you will hardly believe me, but it's true. No sooner had Uncle Wiggily and the pussy put up the lunch, wrapping some for each visitor in nice green grape leaves, than the first ones of the picnic party began to arrive. They were Dickie and Nellie Chip Chip, the sparrows, for they could fly through the air very quickly, and so they came on ahead. We got your invitation that the July bug left us, Uncle Wiggily, and we came at once, said Dickie. Where are the others? asked the old gentleman rabbit. They are coming, answered Nellie, as she tied her tail ribbon over again, for the bow knot had become undone as she was flying through the air. Well, in a little while, along came hopping Sammy and Susie Littletail, the rabbit children, and Billy and Johnny Bushytail, the squirrel brothers, and Bully and Bolly the frogs, and Dottie and Munchie Trot the ponies, and Lulu and Alice and Jimmy Wibblewobble, the duck twins, and Buddy and Bright Eyes Pig, and oh, all the boy and girl animals I have ever told you about. 
and oh how glad they were to see uncle wiggily he had to tell them all about his travels after his fortune before they would go off in the woods to the picnic but at last they went each one with a small leaf package of lunch the july bug came along too and he had a very little package of good things because he was so small you see but it was enough they all sat down on the ground with flat stones for plates and sticks for knives and forks and they ate their picnic lunch there oh they had the finest time and it didn't matter if some ants did get in the sugar uncle wiggily said they could have all they wanted of the sweet stuff and when the picnic was almost over there was a sudden noise in the bushes and two bad foxes sprang out one tried to grab uncle wiggily and another made a dash for lulu wibblewobble oh dear cried dotty trot without looking to see if her hair ribbon was on straight we shall be eaten up no you won't cried the brave july bug i'll fix those foxes so that brave july bug just buzzed his wings as hard as he could and straight at those foxes he flew bumping and banging them on their noses and in the eyes so that they gave two separate and distinct howls and ran away taking their big tails with them so that is how the july bug saved everybody from being eaten up and then the picnic was over and everyone said it was lovely well i'll start on my travels again tomorrow said uncle wiggily as his friends told him good-bye now what happened to him the next day i'll tell you very soon for in case i see a chipmunk with a blue tail and a red nose climbing up the clothespole the story will be about uncle wiggily and jack in the pulpit end of uncle wiggily and the july bug